Hi and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we will be talking energy and I will be revisiting some of my old videos. We'll start in 10 seconds. As always, before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. Thank you. By the way, if you do not want to miss a giveaway, please subscribe so you get notified on my 10k stream. And hopefully it will be handled very soon. Let's get started with today's video. In the version 2021.8 of Home Assistant, there were a lot of changes. Some of them are currency setting in Home Assistant, gouge card that now has needle, sidebar view, which is something that is used also in the new energy dashboards, long-term statistics, which is, I would say, a core part of the energy dashboard, and of course, energy management. Today we will be talking about energy management. About a year and a half ago, I covered already energy aspect of Home Assistant with the integration of the Shell EM and later video with Utility Meter. And I'm still using them and they're working great with the new Energy Management tab. And if you have followed my Shell EM video, you should now be ready to embed your Shell Energy Meter inside Home Assistant. But don't worry, there are tons of other options if you do not have or you cannot buy Shell EM. There are a lot of energy integration inside Home Assistant. Some of them are direct integrations with your utility providers, either are integration for your solar panels, the other ones, for example, can be integrations to specific equipment that can be used to track the energy meter. So there are tons and tons of options if you want to see energy using inside Home Assistant. As I said, I'm still using Shell EM. But if you do not want to go with the off-the-shelf device, there are additional options. One that I would definitely recommend, of course, if your utility meter does support it, is this one from Marcel. First of all, it is DIY device, and I love it. It is also ESP device, and it's running off the ESP home. So you get a lot of integration and a lot of stuff from it. Next, in this kit is already included the box for it. And if your utility meter is using DSMR version 5, you do not even have to provide power for it. But unfortunately, there is a backlog of orders for this device. Let me stop here for a minute. As I mentioned previously, I am preparing to have 10k stream and it will be held somewhere, I guess, around mid of September. One of the lucky winners will win this device, no matter of the back orders currently. And I thank Marcel for that. The other things that I will be giving away is a doorbell for him and I'm still waiting to see if I will manage to get a new NFC card reader from Andrea Dono, but we will talk about it later on and in future videos. So let's get back to the subject of the energy meters. As I mentioned, this is one way where you can, I would say, cheaply get the energy reading inside Home Assistant. But there are some other projects, for example, this one. This one is using clamp to detect the current that is flowing inside the wires. The same principle that Shelly EM is using. But let me just mention that all of these devices, Shelly EM, Shelly EM3, this one here, that are using clamps, can be used for both the energy usage and energy production. So if, for example, you have solar panels and grid and you are using Shelly EM and you are only having one phase in your house, you can use one of the clamps to detect the power going from the solar cells and the other clamp can be used to detect the power getting from the grid. That way you will have all the data that Home Assistant can currently detect. While we are already on that subject, there is something you should also know. Home Assistant developers did mention that in future they hope to add support for not just energy, but also water usage and gas usage. And that's why in one of my future videos, I will be showing you how you can track the usage of your gas, water or energy meter, even if it's analog one. No need for any cable integration with it. But as I said, that will be the topic of my next video. So let's get back to the energy integration and Shell EM. If you have updated to 2021.8, 
and you are using internal Shelly integration, then all you have to do is go to the configuration, energy, select here your Shelly EM, decide if you want to use any of these and let me quickly explain what are the differences. For example, do not track costs, doesn't track any cost. This one can be used if you already have some kind of internal system to track your energy usage cost. I do have it in my setup, but in this setup I didn't have, so nothing here. Use an entity with current price allows you to have a helper field or input number field where you can store the current cost of energy. This is something that I'm currently using in my setup because I moved away from the entity tracking the total cost. And the last one is to use the static price. Let's say that price here is 17 or dot 17, so 0.17 kunas or 17 lipas for kilowatt hour. But we have here euro. Doesn't matter, we will change it. Let's press save. But what happens if you are not using internal Shelly integration inside Home Assist? Let's look at developer tools. If you go to developer tools, we can see here that we have device class power for this and this will not work with the Home Assistant. In this release, this needs to be energy. We also need additional fields such as last reset date and we also need to store it as a long-term statistics. So we are missing some fields. Unfortunately, at the time of the recording, this is no issue for Shelly for Hass, but there is a workaround. You just need to change this device class from power to energy and add additional two customizations. And how can you do that? Let's go to template. Here I have code that I have copied from the Home Assistant community forums. And what it does, it looks for the state sensor. If it matches Shelly, total consumption, it will add three attributes. Last reset, which is needed to know when the last reset was made for this sensor device class energy and state class measurement. State class measurement is used for long-term statistics. All you need to do is inside developer tools, template, paste the code that will be in the description of the video. And when you get the result, this string here, you just copy it and paste it inside your customize.yaml file, like this. And for each consumption sensor, so we have uh, Shelly EM first line, Shelly EM second line, Shelly plug one, Shelly plug two, Shelly plug three here, and the last one is Shelly 1L. These all now will have device class energy, state class measurement, and last reset. As I said, this is not needed for Home Assistant internal integration and MQTT, as far as I know. This is only needed if you are using Shelly for Hass. The other option you have is, of course, to use the user interface for that. And how would you do that is go to Configuration, Customizations, and for each and every sensor you have here, you would add Last Reset, Device Class, or State Class. And that's it. As you can see, I have this disabled currently, but I will enable it before I restart my Home Assistant. But let's get back to cost. As you can see, I have a euro here and we are not using euros still in Croatia. So I need to change this to my local currency. Let's do that quickly. Let's go to configuration, general settings. And here I have currency selector. I can start typing HR and then select HRK for Croatian Kuna. But what if these settings here are disabled? Yes, you can customize this even through the YAML file. For this, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and under Home Assistant part of the configuration file, where we have name, longitude, latitude, elevation, etc., we have to add one line. Currency HRK. Please be careful just to use letters here. I don't think that at the time of the recording of this video, the new fix has been released that allows you to use symbols. So if you're using US dollars, you have to type USD. For Euro, it's EUR, etc. And by adding this currency line here, the next time I restart my home assistant, the value here will change from 
euro to Croatian kuna. We now cover this part. I myself unfortunately cannot set this up because I live in an apartment building and my neighbors wouldn't be that happy if I would use or abuse our roof to put solar panels there. Or maybe they would notice. Okay, let's forget it, but if you have solar panels, then here you can select, for example, Shelly EM2 as something that is producing power, and that way you will have much nicer graphs. If you are worried about carbon footprint, I really do hope that you've seen already my video about the CO2 signal, because Home Assistant now uses this data not just to provide you its own sensor inside Home Assistant, but also it can be used inside the energy management dashboard to show you your carbon footprint. The process itself is very simple. Go to web page, enter your email address and you will receive the API code. Then use this API code. You don't need to use YAML anymore. You can do it through the user interface and activate the integration. And that's it. As I mentioned, I don't have any solar panels, so I cannot do anything here, but we can add individual devices. Let me add devices that I have. So these are four devices that I already have that can provide data or information or statistics for Home Assistant. One is Shelly 1L, this is my bathroom ventilator, and the other three are my dishwasher, washing machine, and my marvelous Ender 3 Pro printer. And this is all you need to enter here to have nice graphs. Let's go to Energy tab. As you can see, I have here information. So this one is my dishwasher. This one is my bathroom vent. And here you can see the graph of energy usage inside my apartment. Let me switch to my production system. I don't know if you notice the difference, but I have here two different colors or brightnesses of this color. One is up to the 6 a.m. and the other one starts at 7 a.m. If we go back in the past, you can see this one lighter, this one darker and this one lighter. So what is this? This is the other video that I previously mentioned and it's called Utility Meter. Utility meter was used before energy dashboard was added to Home Assistant to track the usage of water, gas or electricity, but also to be able to divide it in a different tariffs. So for example, I have peak and off-peak electricity cost. Peak is between 7 am and I think 9 pm. And this is this darker color. Off-peak, well, cheaper electricity is after 9 p.m. and goes to 6 a.m. in the morning. It changes between the summer and the winter. This allows me to use more electricity in the off-peak hours and to offload the grid in the peak hours. Unfortunately, we as a family really didn't manage to move our energy cost or energy usage from peak to off-peak. But at least now I know what are the differences. And if you've seen my previous videos about my home setup, this is something that I already had previously, even without an energy dashboard. So yes, you can do this on your own. And this is the graph that I used previously to track the consumption between the night and day. So, so far we covered on how you can configure your energy dashboard or energy monitoring dashboard inside Home Assistant with the Shelly EM. I showed you what you need to do in order to fix your Shelly forecast integration until there is official fix. Also, I showed you how to change currency. We did mention CO2 signal integration. I did talk about the solar panels. Unfortunately, I cannot show them because I do not have them. And we did mention end devices such as Shelly plugs or Shelly 1Ls, amps, tools, whatever, that can be used to track the usage of the power for a specific device, light or group of devices. And yeah, don't forget that I also mentioned that in future this energy tab will be used to track not just electricity, but also gas and water metering. And I did mention that in the future I'll be releasing video showing you how you can do and track analog water, gas, electricity meters. So stay tuned for that. The last thing that I want to add before we wrap up this video is 
what you can do if you already have some kind of energy monitoring, but it's not monitoring in kilowatt hours. Instead, it's monitoring current power usage. So instead of KWH, you only have W. There is a fix for it. A link to this is in the description of the video. But this integration is called integration Riemann sum integral. And if we scroll down, we can see that there is an energy heading. What it allows you? It allows you to automatically convert the watts to kilowatt hours. And the only thing you need is create new sensor and copy or reuse this data. Platform integration, source, this is your current sensor, name, this is the future name of the sensor or sensor that will hold kilowatt hours and round and unit prefix. And restart your home assistant and voila, you just created a new sensor that will allow you to use it inside the energy management dashboard. And that's it. I know that this video was a lot of everything and I didn't go into much of the details, but I think that in the last three weeks, since the release was released and I was enjoying my vacation, a lot of this was already covered. I did want to touch some of the things that I mentioned previously or some workarounds that I think that you should know. And I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and find it useful. If of course you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. The link to Discord server is in the description of the video, but feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button, because I don't think that you want to miss my 10k stream. As I mentioned, I think it will be around the mid of September, where I will be making a giveaway. And this giveaway will be with a lot of fun stuff that either I myself bought just for that giveaway. And thanks Marcel once again for allowing me to cut the line and jump into your back orders. But also some of the stuff that I received recently from Banggood for the reviews. So subscribe and watch the stream. And this is it for this video. I hope that you did enjoy it and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.